Yo! Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speak coming to you live and direct from our global headquarters here in Rochester, New York, with A Team Friday. That's Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. And today's expert is Jeremiah's J Man Manero. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk about door knocking today because if you don't know, if you're in the state of New York, the state of emergency has been lifted. And now, all of you do not have an excuse not to cold call. Those of you who really hate cold calling were like, yo, <laughs> I can't do it. You're like, oh, yeah, you finally have an excuse on why you can't do it. But now you don't. So let's talk about it. I do have, uh, I'm proud to be an American, right? To celebrate 4th of July. We got the uh, American flag just booming in the background there. Bigger than my whole body. It's pretty exciting. We're wearing red on Friday to support the military. This is my favorite Spartan t-shirt. Check out the back. You're going to like the back. Spartans return with their shield or on it. What? Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like that is, that's, that's what it's all about. I feel like realtors, you know, you return with that listing or not at all. <laughs> so, uh, Big shout out. We got some folks watching. We got our man right here, Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Boom from the NYC in the place to be. Great to see you. Um, IGY6. I don't even know what that means, Jeffrey. It's shook you talking fancy talk to me. Uh, we got Billy from B Town in the building. Give her a little. <laughs> So if you're watching this live or you're catching up, we just got in here, post where you're from. Uh, today we're going to talk about door knocking. I'd love to hear any questions you might have. I'm going to tell you, uh, we'll, we'll talk it, talk about it from three different perspectives or, or objectives, I guess I would say. Uh, door knocking for expireds, door knocking for sale by owners, and an easy one, circle prospecting. And then maybe even just door knocking your existing clients, also known as pop by it and visits. I'll find great ways to make that. That's real easy because those are people you know. But ways that you can do it, be efficient, still stay top of mind. Okay? So not seeing any questions yet. Let me fix my camera. I don't like when it's not full screen like that. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna move this one just a little bit further back. Let's see what this is. Okay. We're gonna go to a door right now. Pa -pa. <laughs> yeah, boy. Look at I got I got a real door. A real door. Bing 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 bing. Hello, is anybody home? Hello. Okay. So uh first things first is you, you wanna plan ahead, right? You want to plan ahead when it comes to door knocking. There's nothing more important than your time. You don't want to aimlessly drive around. Um, in Back in the day, we used to just door knock a neighborhood, right? Now with science and data, you should be working smarter. Okay, smarter, not harder. So if you have a certain area that you want to specialize in, uh, I know if you're watching from New York, uh, you probably have Remind. Uh, if you don't, Remind.com, you could probably sign up for it. I don't think it's that expensive, but it integrates with your tax record. And what you can do is it uses predictive analytics as well. And it gives you a seller, a high seller score for people in a certain area. So if I have a zip code, if I have a neighborhood that I want to really specialize in, and I'm just blindly looking for listings rather than door knock everybody, right? Cause then you're going to hit the, the person who's, you know, you may hit a tenant occupied property. You may hit somebody who's just bought the house. You may hit somebody who's been there for 30 years. So it may be a, be a good one, but they're probably not moving if they're, you know, silent Jenner or, or older boomer. So with Remind, you can get the high seller scores and it'll take all of the properties in an area. And then you can pinpoint it, right? So it's like a sniper approach. I'm going here, pew, here, pew, 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 pew. pew. Okay. Uh, so you're going to plan ahead, plan, plan where you're going to go and map it out. So does it make sense for you to go here, then across town? And with everything we talk about, whether it's for sale by owners or expireds or, or you know, blindly just cold calling a neighborhood, you need to map it out, especially if you're in an area that has traffic. Like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I 
I mean, that's the planning. So many of us want to just get to work, right? If once you get into door knocking, it's like, yo, let's go knock, let's go door knock, let's go door knock, let's go door knock. But it's it's so. Well, man, Manhattan's different, Jeffrey. Okay, there's four other boroughs over there. Uh, but here's what I do know: some t some tips and tricks that I've learned from agents that work Manhattan is they get in good with the doormen, right? You. You, you know, let's say grease some palms, but if you take care of the doorman, if you're really cool, like you can get referrals or tips or into buildings sometimes. Um, just saying, you got to work, work the network. Okay. All right. So where do I want to begin? Let's start with circle prospecting because that'll be the easiest. Let's say you get a listing. Hooray. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Awesome! Yeah. Yes, you get a listing. And you're going to go there. You're going to put up your sign. You're putting up your lockbox. Whatever it is, you're in the neighborhood. While you're in the neighborhood, make better use of that time. Right? So I'd, I'd go over. Here's the neighbor's house. <laughs> I just love this. Do, do, do. Knock, knock, knock. Right? This, this is like a friendlier knock because you're not really there to list the house. What I would do is... If you have postcards that you send out just listed to the neighborhood or you have brochures or anything like that you, that you might print um, to have at your open houses or at the property, bring those with you as well. And it's a really simple conversation, right? First thing I do is I knock on the door. You're always professionally dressed. You're not going to dress like I am right now for this live stream. Uh, but I like to say business casual. You don't have to dress like you're going to church, but don't dress like you're going to a picnic either, right? For guys, it might be a polo shirt. I love branded polo shirts typically. Um, if you see me during my workday, that's what I'm wearing. Branded polo shirt with slacks. For women, um, professionally dressed, you know, cover up, look professional. Don't wear high heels. Wear flats. You're going to be walking, okay? Just look professional. And so when you knock, you're going to stand a little bit further away from the, from the door. Uh, because even before COVID, like if I'm knocking on the door and I'm standing right here, right? And I'm a stranger. I knock. You're not going to answer the freaking door, right? So I stand a little bit further away from the door. And then you see that window there? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I have my back turned to the door. And I have my back turned to the door because I don't want to see the person peeking through that window right there going, no, no, no. We don't want any, Sonny. You go away. <laughs> and so... So I don't even see it. I don't, they have to open the door. They have to because I'm just going to sit there as long as it takes. You know, if there's a car in the driveway and I, and I truly believe they're home, if there's no cars and no lights on and whatever, no signs of somebody being there, then you should leave. <laughs> but if, if they're home, I'll just stand there. Do, 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 check my phone. Do, 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 do. Finally answer. Oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. Uh, we're here. We just, we just put the... The, Do the Doe's house on the market right down the street here. Are you from, do you know them? 717? Yeah. Yeah. So we just put that property on the market. We just listed it. For, can you believe whatever the price is? $549,000. Man, the, the properties have really appreciated in the neighborhood, right? So I'm kind of like subliminally properties are really appreciated in the neighborhood. How long have you been here? Ask them. And then listen. Oh, we've been here for 20 years. Oh, we bought last year. Oh, we bought five years ago. Oh, we bought 10 years ago. These are all like indicators. Is this a prospect? Is this a prospect? But you're still not going to be like, thought about listing your home? Never go there. Never go there with circle prospecting. What I would do is, you sat in there. Oh, oh, oh been here. Wow, that long. Man, you must really like it. Did you know, What do you love about the neighborhood? And then, again, let them talk. Oh, we love... Uh, they, they, we have a, a, a. This is good information for you, anyways, for the listing. We love that there's a neighborhood picnic and blah 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 blah. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, where where did you guys live prior? Or you know, you guys you feel like this is your forever home? And they say, Oh yeah, we're gonna die in this home. Okay, great. Well, do you think you're gonna die soon? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, okay, that's you know fantastic. Well, I just wanted to give you the information. This is a great opportunity. For you to pick your neighbors. What What do you mean? You get to pick your neighbors. Do you have a friend? Do you have a relative that you really love or like that you'd want them to be on the neighbor in, in the neighborhood? 
it's here. Here's a, a brochure in the property. Send them over. We're having an open house uh, Sunday, one to three. Or if not, say, hey, you can have them contact me. I'd be happy to get them in. Or if they have a realtor, have their, their realtor contact me. Be happy to get them in. Maybe I know somebody that was thinking about it, right? Best opportunity because you don't know who might buy that property, so why not be in control of it? All right. Nice to meet you. Have a great day. That's it. That's the easiest door knocking you can do. Okay. Um, let's see. We got Jeanette. Jeanette Pacheco in the building. Let's see. She says, I'm planning to do door hangers. I bought next week. Walk my farm area. What do you suggest? I track and excel. Also, how many times do I do I do door hangers in an area? Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, Jeanette, great question. So did you already have the door hangers printed? Because I don't love door hangers. I'm gonna I'm here to be honest with you. Because all of this is to what you need to do is give an appearance that you're not a salesperson because people don't like salespeople. Let's be honest, right? We have been trained since the beginning of time to automatically say no to that salesperson. Whether they come to the door, there's times I've gone to the appliance place, right, to buy something or Best Buy to buy something. And they're like, can I help you, sir? No, 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 just looking. I got money in my pocket to buy something there. And it's just an automatic reaction. Uh, so if you had the door hangers, that's, that's okay. So let me just do this. Um, and your tracking mechanism, it all depends what works for you, right? If, if you love an Excel spreadsheet and you're going to, you're going to export the list of properties, you could export the list, bring it, import it into Excel and then put date, you know, I might put a column of date door knocked. Was there a conversation? Yes or no. And I do, I would keep going back. Uh, so I don't like door hangers. Door hangers are like a passive way. Uh, some agents will just hang them, hang them, hang them, hang them. And that's what they're trying to do is just hang door. I want to have conversations, right? So what I would do is, um, I grabbed a packet of paperwork. Let me grab a single page. Hold on. All right. So instead of the door hanger, they were expensive. Shit. Sorry, Jeanette. <laughs> well, we can save you money next time um, because I don't think it's necessary. See, look at this conversation was already worth it. But I would take, you know, do whatever you're going to do and print it on uh, a brochure or a flyer. I would then roll it up like this, right? I would then find the door, like say this door here is their main door or the only door into the house. I would take it and I would place it right here between the door and the door jam. So when they open the door, it falls to the ground. Okay. We do that because it works. We don't put it in the mailbox. You understand that that's a federal offense, even though. Look at, I put stuff in the mailbox in my lifetime and I still haven't gone to jail for it. But I'm going to recommend that you don't do that. So the flyers are good, but the door hangers, yeah, you could do that for now until you run out, use them all. Um, spreadsheet would be good. What I would do, though, is I would take those spreadsheets and for this kind of stuff, like I'm totally digital, I, I'm paperless, but I would three ring hole punch this and put it in a binder. And make that your your door knocking binder because tracking is everything you know and I would even have uh, as you have different conversations you might have uh, just loose leaf paper okay talk to at one two three anywhere street spoke with Jeremiah had a good conversation he said he had to speak to his wife um, I, I suggested a time to follow up for next week so you always keep all of that information in one place you can then transfer it to like a wireless solution like um, wireless, a digital solution like like Evernote or Google Keep or something like that. But when it comes to the mapping and the printouts and the Excel type stuff, you're on the go. So for me, binders work better. Like I don't, it wouldn't seem normal for me to pull out my computer and then input the things because then you look like, I don't know. But that great, great question. Great, great question um you're welcome yeah uh jeffrey jeffrey scott stan has a good one um leticia i will post one of my flyers in the comments because i have it in a binder but it's in my um travel <laughs> my travel thing because of the last place i went to i brought them off to show the class what i was doing 
Uh, but Jeffrey has uh, voice memo on your phone also works on the go. And I'm going to tell you when I use this. Listen to how smart I was early on in my life about some things. I used to door knock a lot before real estate even. I, I sold alarm systems door to door, went from salesperson to sales manager to district manager to regional manager. Boom. And then made, uh, created my own alarm company. Long story short. But um, I broke my wrist, broke and dislocated my wrist, the hand that I write with. You see it here? See that scar? Yeah, that's as far as my, my hand goes. Um, broke and dislocated it, and so I couldn't take notes. But I'm door knocking, and then I, I, you need to, it's all about the notes because when I go back and talk to Jeff, like, Jeff, yeah, you know, I was here a couple weeks ago. You said you had to speak to the wife. My memory's not that great. I just take great notes, right? And so the voice notes is also a great way to, uh, that's how I did it way back then. And we're talking early 2000s. I had a digital voice recorder, the handheld ones. Back in my day, Shundy. <laughs> and we're like, okay, spoke to Jeremiah, seeing him follow up. And then at the end of the day, um, I hired a girl to transcribe all of my voice notes for me. And then in the beginning, I actually hired her just to write my contracts. She would walk with me. I'd pair by the hour. And then when we had a contract that needed to get filled out and signed, she would write it and I would talk. It's like literally nothing can stop me. I was one-handed. By the time, I, you know, six months later, I am now ambidextrous. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Now I've admitted to it on video. Yes, I did. Come get me, USPS. I did put stuff in the doorknob or in the in the mailbox. I did it. I did it. How do you do it when you're going to jail? Take me away. All right. But I'm going to switch up the doors. Let's see. We're going to go to a for sale. Look, at. I like this one, right? This is a cool one with the two doors. I'm sorry, guys. Like when I prepare for these live streams, I get into these weird little details. I hope you can appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so fancy. So um, here we have the tail of two doors. This is going to be for sale by owners. Um, I'm going to go to the blue door. It's the red or blue door. Which one will you pick? Uh, but with for sale by owners, they're harder to find. You can actually use your clients as, uh, as people to help seek these for sale by owners. It works in two ways. They won't cheat on you, meaning they won't go to the for sale by owner directly. They'll tell you about it first. And you have to give them a, like a value proposition, a reason why. So I say, is, you know, when you're doing your buyer presentation, hey, guess what, man? If you ever seen those red and white signs that say for sale by owner, those are my favorite. And they go, what do you mean? Well, that's like working with a real estate agent who has absolutely no training and didn't even get their license. Right? They saw an HGTV show and they thought they could sell real estate. They have no shot negotiating with me, and I promise you I'll get to you the best deal possible. They're going to they're gonna appeal to the larceny in your soul. They're going to say, hey, work with me. They're like the devil. Work with me. Fire your agent, and you will save all kinds of money. It's not true. Not true. Tell me about them. Take a picture. Text me the address, and let me add them because that's what you hired me to do. Right? So use them, but – um. Zillow used to have make me move. A lot of this is like you got to find it when you're when you're driving around. But also, if you if, if you're involved with like any kind of chamber or like business networking international or any kind of business networking group, I would say a good referral for me are those red and white signs that you might see out there. Oh, those aren't those aren't really uh, sellers, or they're already selling their property. That's what most people will think. I say, no, no, they're they're waiting for me to call them. They need me desperately okay and so uh with a for sale by owner same same concept um you may not have the the cool owns that i the, <laughs> we would pick up the red and white signs right out of the yard okay so it, it depends on your approach and how uh this won't work in all markets but give it a try hey worst thing that happens they yell at you and then you have you know just smile 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 so i pick up the red and white sign and knock on the door let me see where's my door over here oh hello blue house oh yes oh yeah you know i saw your red and white sign and i just want to let you know that i'm here i'm here 
Like, what do you mean you're here? Well, my name is Jeremiah. It's Jamie Monero. I'm with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. Uh, we specialize in helping people, uh, unrepresented sellers, make make a move, right? I mean, you want to sell your home, don't you? Yes. Okay, well, that's exactly why I'm here. We have found that most people, you know, they go for sale by owners because they feel like, I want to save the commission. Am I right? Right? You think like we're way overpriced. All we do is put a sign in the yard because that's all you did was put a sign in the yard. And the property sell. Am I right? Well, yeah, you know, you guys do give. I mean, that that X percent, whatever it is, whatever they tell you, that's way, way too much. That's, you know, if you guys are in a $500,000 market, that's $30,000, right? Wow, yeah, I can understand that that perceived savings, right? But you don't want to leave any money on the table, do you? I always ask tie-in, like, you don't want to leave any money on the table, do you? And then be quiet. You don't want to leave any money on the table, do you? Well, no, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, because what we found and what the National Association of Realtors has found is that for sale by owners that sell the property themselves, actually sell on average for 16% less, 16% less. Now, again, take that 16%. If your average for sale price is 500, if your average sale price and you use 200, my market's a little bit less, that's $32,000, right? Where the X percentage might be 12,000, right? And so I would say, yes, yeah, 16%. So we're actually Actually, we could sell your house for twenty thousand more dollars. You know all the th all the stories you hear about multiple offers and and properties going way over asking. That's because we specialize in the marketing. We take that property, we put it into the MLS. We use the highest quality photos possible. We hire professional photographers, professional stagers, and then putting it in the MLS creates competition it gets additional exposure right now the only exposure you have are the people that might be lucky enough to drive down your street and this will work better even better if it's like a cul-de-sac or a neighborhood where it's like they're not getting a lot of traffic as it is if they're on like the van wick expressway you know and uh, queens or something they, hey you get a lot of traffic there but still that's not as much as you'd get in the mls with thirty-one thousand realtors members of the Long Island Board of Realtors, um, I think even more than that when you incorporate the Hudson Gateway region. So I think that's 40,000 or something. So using those numbers. And then if you're still not successful, I'll tell you nine, nine out of 10 times talking, because they want to sell. The only objection you have to overcome is commission. They want to sell. And then I, what I would try to do is identify what their motivation is. So I would say, um, oh, yeah, where are you guys moving to? What's, what's, what's prompting the move? Oh, we want to get out of New York. You're going to hear, you might hear that a lot lately if you're from New York. We're moving to Florida. We're moving here. We're moving there. Oh, great. Um, do you have an agent that you're working with to help you with the purchase? Because that might be the toughest part, right? You might get multiple offers. You might, stars might align. You get lucky and you have multiple offers. First of all, you got to like evaluate all those offers. Have you ever done that? I had a property with 27 offers the other day, you know, 27, 27 offers. Yeah. And so it's like evaluating all the different, it's not just price, it's terms, it's conditions. If you pick the wrong one and the financing goes bad because you picked the wrong one, cause you're not familiar with the lenders or uh, appraisal gap coverage or anything like that, it could really affect your bottom line. Have you heard of appraisal gap coverage? No, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> You know, so I keep throwing things out there. Yeah, and um, Jeffrey says, what's important to you about selling your house? Um, I like to say, what, you know, what matters to you most, right? But uh, similar similar thing. Um, oh, otter.ai will transcribe the notes, yeah. Uh, but asking those questions, right? What is their motivation? Where are they moving to? Can I help you in the, you know, okay, great. You wanna navigate it yourself. Let me help you with the purchase because we gotta make sure you have enough time, you negotiate that, because we don't want you to be homeless either, right? What if you sell your house, the buyer wants to be in here in 60 days, and you haven't found a place to purchase. I can be your exclusive buyer's agent. We talk a little bit about that, because in this market, more than any market, you need that, okay? And then maybe you could pick them up as a buyer client, and then eventually as a seller. Like, don't try to do like buy or die. Like buy or die with, with the Fizbos is not the approach. More than anything, all of these 
all of these interactions is to build rapport. You want them to like you at the door. You don't want to be Richard Noggin, right? You got to be like, oh, hey, like a smile goes a long way before they answer the door to this. Right? <laughs> I don't have to say anything. Like nonverbal communication says it all. Um, not having like a briefcase with you, not wearing a shirt and tie, not like all of those are salesperson signs and uh, it's not what you want to do. And, you know, I was telling somebody this story the other day when they said like for sale by owners, why did you go after them? And like one of the very first for sale by owners that I listed was for $59,000. And like guys in my office were like, listen, kid, you got to go after the big money. $59,000 is not going to make a living. And my, my, my thought process was, look at that $59,000 person um, is going to move up and become 150000 and then move up and then move up. But also, you got to think of the lifetime of every client, the lifetime of business from every client. Every client is going to refer you five to seven times in their, in their life if you do a great job. So that $50,000 listing, who cares? But I was looking at this one because um, if, you, if you follow me on Facebook, I listed a property yesterday. Um, it was a rehab property that I sold to him and I just listed his son's rehab property that I sold to him. So that's four, let's, let's call that four transactions in the last 30 days from this father and son. But they were that $59,000 listing in 2006. Okay, he's actually a pastor and I've sold, I really should sit down and, and work it out probably 20, 30 properties for them in the last 15 years. So that's what you got to think. Think big time. Think long term. Don't think buy or die right now. Okay, so that's that's the for sale by owners. Oh, and the last thing that I, I used to put together was a, a for sale by owner uh, toolkit. And you really, what you want to do is you want to put together so much paperwork that they're like, holy shit, I don't want to do this myself. And New York State, it's great because I'm like, okay, we have our agency disclosure. We have our, our lead paint. Uh, we have our fair housing disclosure. We have our um, property condition disclosure. Uh, well, COVID, don't forget about that. It's still not over. You still want to have one of those disclosures, right? And you have all of this. <laughs> so they go, wow. Yeah, um, another great one. Thanks, Jeff. So, Jeff, don't be wasting all this because we got a broadcast in a couple weeks from your office. You're going to be talking about similar stuff. Uh, but put it all together. And like, if you have specific forms for your market, for your area, put it all together. You're like, why would I give them all of the tools to sell the home? Look at if they're, if they're, if they're committed to it, they're going to sell it regardless. What you want to do is say, look at, here's this, here's this, here's this, here's that. Oh my gosh, here, and don't forget this and don't forget this and don't forget this. Oh, and if you get 15, 20 offers, yeah, you should probably call me. <laughs> okay. Um, but here's a, a form that I use to, to, to do that, the spreadsheet. I've shared this with you guys. If you want my multiple offers template, I'll send it to you. Uh, but it's just a great way to take all the offers and put the terms, conditions, price, escalation, all that. Oh, and, hey, if you get an escalation clause, then that gets real sticky. But hey, uh, good luck selling on your own. Um, wish you all the best. Here's my info if you need anything. And here's the, the for sale by owner um, survival kit. And just walk away, right? Walk away, happy-go-lucky. Make it a great day. See you real soon because you probably will see them real soon or you can still pick them up as a buyer or if they're relocating outside the area, you can pick up the referral for where they're going, right? Don't just think of that business. Don't think of that house alone. Think of everything else that can come from it. Every opportunity that you have there. All right, let me go to my third property. I think this is going to be an expired because it looks more like an expired. <laughs> Right? Oh, this is gloomy. This looks like a like a London property. I don't know. I don't know. But Rachel said 100. Rachel! Hey, Rachel. We're going to be in New York City uh, the 13th and 14th. Be, keep on the lookout. We're doing small group coaching there. Um, all right. So we come over here. Here's my sad and lonely expired listing. Yeah, I wore shorts today. Um, I'm going to map this all out. Like I said, I, I've told you and I'll, I, I might post it in the, in the, in the comments below. 
Uh, I did a video about how to look for old expires, but just look for old expires in your MLS and then scrub them to be sure they haven't been relisted. And by old old expires, I mean March from March 2020 all the way until as far back as your MLS will go. I don't care. I don't care if it was 10 years ago. Basically, what you're looking for are people that wanted to sell their home but couldn't, period. You scrub it, make sure they didn't sell, and then you map it out. Just like before, you map it out. You're going to take that and um, – where is she? Like Jeanette had said, if, you, um, if you're doing – the door hangers and you have a spreadsheet, I might have just another spreadsheet. Each one of these would be like a different section in my binder. Um, I would have circle prospecting, I would have for sale by owners, and then I would have expireds, okay? So with the expireds, you map it all out. And don't be afraid. Uh, let me just, I got so many soap boxes today. Don't be afraid of the price, right? A million dollar listing is just a million dollar listing. They're not million dollar people. They're just people. Matter of fact, I found the more expensive the listing, the easier it is because the people are more familiar with the process. They, they're, they're used to hiring an expert to do things. Okay? The real challenging ones for me are the freaking the first time home seller watches too much HGTV for, you know, and I'm selling them for $69.9. And they're like, oh, you got to negotiate your commission if you want me to accept it. Okay? So it doesn't matter the listing price. You are good enough, everybody. You are good enough. So when I knock on that, and start with the expensive. Start from the top down, right? Start from the bottom. Now I'm here because it's like if you want to make more money, there's two things you could do. You could sell more real estate or sell more expensive real estate or both. Sell more expensive real estate more often, right? So you go to the door. I would say <clears throat> knock, knock, knock. Good morning good morning good morning uh my name is jeremiah J. Man monero i'm with the monero team at xyz realty i saw that your property uh was recently on the market should have sold but didn't if it's not recent let's say oh man we're looking through our archives because this market is so incredibly uh active and just really on fire let's be honest and we saw that your property was on the market should have sold but didn't what happened you do you remember back in 2016 you had it on the market yes Okay, I mean, and I would, I would just double check, are you Jeremiah's Monero, um, right? Or did it sell? Sometimes things sell off market or it's not recorded properly, depending on your market and how they do stuff. Um, some of you are in a non-disclosure state. There might be a, a, another issue altogether. So then, should have sold but didn't. Okay, why do you think that is? And then I would just stop and listen. This is where somebody like Jeff with his NLP, um, you know, specialty, man, just stop and listen. And just be an active listener. If you've been in any of my classes, we've done like the last letter exercise. Uh, if you don't know what the last letter exercise is, basically you're having a conversation with somebody. You're not going to do this with the person at the door, but it's a great way to practice active listening. Is you start the first, your next sentence with the last letter that they ended with. So if I said, how are you today? You say, you know what? I'm doing really fantastic. C crazy market huh and so that like that exercise will help you to be an active listener so when i asked that question uh your property was on the market should have sold but didn't what do you think uh why do you think that was and then just listen they go well you know what at the time that agent uh really didn't do a great job marketing uh you know they didn't expose us to enough properties uh, or enough people and, and just the market wasn't that great i i understand exactly how you feel and this is called the feel felt found method it's like traditional sales I understand exactly how you feel many of our clients have felt the same way but what they found out is like this market has actually increased 54.7 percent in the last five years you were listed eight years ago so your home that was two hundred thousand dollars at the time in my opinion I'm just giving you a range would probably be worth about three hundred thousand dollars so the market has improved enough to get the money that you want and then some and I can tell you when it comes to marketing, we're second to none. We have a customized social media and video marketing strategy like you've never seen. I would love to show you. Can I come in? This method, I'm, I'm telling you this more than anything. You can't see my, my here, I'm going to walk over here. I got my Superman slippers on. Um, you're just wiping your feet. 
can I come in? And that's and then you get in the house. Okay. Now, a couple things you have to be careful of, and I'm, this is a safety disclaimer, right? Trust your instincts. If the guy seems creepy and he's like, "Hello, yeah, I'll come in," and I'm like, "Yeah, you live here alone. <laughs> I'll be back never, right? I'll be back in February." Uh, but if you're a male and a, and a female is home alone and the husband's not there. I would say when's a good time to come back when everybody's home who could make the decision. Uh, if you're a female and the husband's there and the wife isn't, same thing. Um, I'd, I would love to think that we live in a world where a husband or wife would come home and find you there talking about real estate and that would be okay, but that's not realistic. Not at all, okay? I guess <laughs> I don't care who it is and how great your relationship is. Somebody comes home and there's another person of the opposite sex in the building, then that building will be on fire. Okay. So just ask those clarifying questions before coming in. Uh, but you really just want to build rapport, right? Listen, ask open-ended questions. And again, with every single one of them, it, whether it's a FISBO or uh, an expired listing, I would say, you know, what was the motivation? Where were you guys going to move to? And they're like, oh man, we're gonna move to Florida. That's where the kids are. Uh, you know, really, it's just with the, with the. And they're giving you all the ammunition you need, right? Wow, with the two floors, it's getting hard. My husband, his knees don't work as well anymore. And it's like, um, that's exactly what you need to let them know, right? And they're like, oh, well, here. If I could show you really that we could get your home sold, we could negotiate maybe an extended uh, closing period, give you enough guys enough time to find a property uh, that that's really the home of your dreams in Florida. And by the way, we work with a lot of agents in Florida because we send so many people there from New York. We'd be happy to refer you to a quality agent as well. Is it something like you feel then you could put your property on the market and make your move? I mean, I, I just want to help you be with the kids, single story living in Florida, looking over that canal or the ocean or, right? And then you start painting the picture for them of what it would look like to achieve their dreams. Because ultimately that's what, I'm not selling a house. This could be their lifelong home where they raise their kids, right? Let's get this house sold for you so you can make your move over to Florida and be with those kids, right? They have grand grandkids too. Oh yeah, they got, you know, three grandkids, five, 10. Uh, Let's get you there. Boom. That's it. Okay. Um. <laughs> no, no, Jeff. Um, it's entirely up to you, though. You know? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Um, I, I will say, you know, Billy had a comment here. Door knocking is not my favorite. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. So I'm, I'm going to kind of close out with this because um, we try to keep it to about 30 minutes. And any other, any other questions you have, just just hit me up right now. Um, I'll, I'll put some stuff back in the comments. Put it back to the American flag. No, actually, I'm going to go back to this one. I think this one was my favorite. Yeah, blue and red. Um, I've knocked, I want to say, tens of thousands of doors. You could probably still see it. Might be harder. The autofocus. I have a permanent callus on this one knuckle from knocking. No joke. It is like hard as a rock. Tens of thousands of doors. And and here's what I've do they all go perfectly? Hell no. That's not realistic. Is there gonna be somebody who's the dick to you at the door or somebody like, get out of my get off my porch? Yes, 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 there will be people. But this is what you need to know. This is your best way to get through it. Okay, you guys know me well enough now if you tune in often. Like, I'm happy go lucky. Like, sometimes I'd be like, can't nobody bring me down. Oh, no, right? And you just got to have that mindset that they're not saying no to you personally. Because who could say no to you? All of you are God's gift to real estate. If you're watching this right now, when you knock on their door, you have to feel like, I'm here. 
I'm the one you've been waiting for. You've been wait. Aren't you grateful that I'm here? You should be. I'm an expert in real estate and I am here to save the day, right? That's how you got to think about it. And when you, when you change that mindset and they go, get off my porch, you son of a burr. I had one guy, I'll tell you two separate stories. Um, one guy spit at me. Okay. Uh, this was, this was in Staten Island, Jeffrey. Okay. Um, one guy spit at me and I was like, I dodged it like that. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. It seems like you're a bit upset. What's the get off my property? So I backed up to the sidewalk. And I said, okay, sir. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Right? So much of what was going on with that dude had nothing to do with me. Right? Had nothing. In, he just does not like life. And p <laughs> misery loves company. And I was just like, you know what? You just, you keep your misery over there. You want to bring it and give it to me. I don't have to take the gift. Right? I'm going to return to sender. Thank you so much, sir. Have a great day. And I'm on my way. Okay? The, the second incident, knock, 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 knock. And then I went away from the door. And then I went back, knock, 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 knock. Nobody answered. And I knew they were home. And that annoys me. So I gave it another knock, 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 knock. No, I still didn't. All right, fine. So I went to the next, the next house over. This dude came over with this Doberman picture on, on like a leash. He's like, was that you knocking on my door? I was like, yes, sir. You know, we're just, you know, in the neighborhood helping people achieve the American dream of home ownership. And he was like, don't you ever knock on my door like that again, like with his dog in a threatening manner. And I was like, sir, I must warn you, I'm a highly trained martial artist. I will hurt you and your dog. So please go back. And, no, let me go back to your house, sir. Right now. I'm warning you. Yo, and it was just, a, it was a game of poker because I was bluffing. I'm not a highly trained martial artist. Can I handle myself? Yes. Am I a world um, state ranked wrestler back in high school? Yeah. Will I take you down and ground and pound? Probably. But I've, uh, I got that from my, my parents, really good friend. He's like a fifth degree black belt, traveled to Okinawa, and he would have to warn people like that because that dude's got some skills. Um, and he, this guy didn't want to try me. He didn't want to try me that day. <laughs> I sent him back in his house. All right, so any other questions, hit me up. I'm not seeing any in the comments. Do, 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 do. Do, do. All right, Rachel. Great to see you, Jeffrey. Thanks for tuning in again. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Billy P from B-Town. Make it a great day. Um, Leticia, thank you again for being here. Jeanette Pacheco, make sure you get all those door hangers hung and then never buy them again. Uh, please, guys, if you're going to invest a lot of money in marketing things, just shoot me a message. I'm happy to give you the honest, my honest opinion, okay? I'm not going to send you a bill after. I'm here to make sure you agents take your business to the next level. So, this is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks. Let me see what I want to do. And with that, and oh, here we go. This is a great song called Beast Mode. It starts off kind of slow, right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Go dummy, go beast, don't know. I go beast, go deep.